Hey guys, what's up? I kind of want to lend my voice to the situation regarding, well, a lot of things. The DLC for Spider-Man PS4, the city that never sleeps, all the DLCs, the problem with certain digital content being made in the way it's delivered, and a couple of YouTube users. Now, normally, I don't ever talk about other people. I really try not to, but because these guys are so entrenched in the public domain based on their YouTube channels. And I, and this isn't me trying to talk smack about them. This is actually about their viewpoints on Spider-Man PS4. Evan has nothing but positivity toward the game, even though there are shortcomings in this game. Don't get me wrong. This is one of the best Spider-Man games, but it suffers from a lot of flaws. Some fundamentally, others uh, inconsequentially, because there are some things that don't that probably won't be there in the sequel. But there are some things that really stood out, like the Mary Jane missions. I thought those were terrible, honestly. The most of the missions. Uh, I guess. I, I mean, I do not intend to go in any order. I just want to tell anyone who's listening that there again, Spider-Man seems to have a lot of drama following it when it comes to being on the PlayStation 4. Now, I watched Lucas's video, Evan's video, and Caboose's video. I, I, I think his, he goes by Amazing Lucas, Evan Falarka, yeah, that's his name out there, Caboose XBL, and some of Insomniac's tweets, their style of communication. Now, having watched Caboose's video, let's, go, let's start with him. One of the few points, I mean, I I listened, I just felt like no new information stuck out other than w this one thing he said. Caboose XBL, Caboose XBL made the claim that fans are not entitled to more, or something along those lines, that, um, that they're not entitled to have the same Raimi suit or any costume in the game that they desire. However, I, I mean, I do kind of agree with that. But in this case, it's a little bit different, and this lies with the problem of fundamental... Uh, this is the fundamental flaw of doing a Season Pass-style distribution model for downloadable content, where you pay for a pack, but you don't know what you're getting. To be quite honest, I've never been a fan of content released in that manner. I, I don't imagine anyone should be. I mean, you're just paying for a couple of items that they're not random you know that it, something is there but you don't know what you're getting i mean the difference between like a Yu-Gi-Oh booster pack or like a Yu-Gi-Oh booster pack or if anyone still plays Yu-Gi-Oh and downloadable content is, is that this is not random this is planned and everything you're getting is the same that everyone else will be getting there is no difference among who buys what or what is within this amount of content that's my problem with DLC used as a season pass. I've never been a fan of it. In fact, I don't usually buy that on a daily basis. But, that said, I think people complaining about the Sam Raimi suit, they have a grievance that I wish, I kind of wish Insomniac had addressed a lot better. I, I feel like whoever needs to, whoever runs their Twitter needs to get fired or be just be replaced by someone who's sort of built to handle these things, Insomniac's communication is less than inspiring, in my personal opinion. Now, the DLC that people are asking about, the same. Let's start with the first important little fact here. I don't think any developer should be getting death threats over a skin that didn't make it into the final cut of downloadable content. Let's just make that clear. The second fact I'd like to establish is that Normally, I would say that fans are not entitled to have content that they preferentially want to see in the, a game that wasn't even made by them. It was made by the developers, but this is where things change because you're making money. You as a developer are taking people's money and you're giving them items that you can't even talk about. I mean, again, the DLC model... Season Pass, I, I think it's a broken model. I, I Honestly, in most circumstances, with most video games, I wouldn't pay for something like that. I would just wait until the actual product is out. Now, 
I'm not really a fan of the Spider-Man PS4 community. Over enthusiasm. Over enthusiasm. I, I don't know what the word is. They tend to be this overly enthusiastic community that think the game is perfect or to talk about it in a negative light would upset a few individuals, that it would turn a few heads and make them angry at you or something like that. Now, every time I see conversations about Spider-Man PS4, it's either something really bolstered to a positive level or to a negative apex. Now, there, I see less room for middle ground. Caboose XBL's video on the Silver Lining DLC with the skins that came out, the Dr. Aaron Eichmann skins that came out, the Dr. Aaron Eichmann Spider-Man skin, the Cyborg Spider-Man skin, and I can't remember the other one at the moment that comes to mind. I just know that... Okay, I just remembered. It's the Into the Spider-Verse skin. It's based on... Well, some people are calling it cheating by Insomniac because Into the Spider-Verse is a nod to the Sam Raimi films of back in the day. I don't know what to make of it, and I really don't care right now, because tomorrow I want to go see Into the Spider-Verse. I don't really think I'll be doing a review. I don't really know if I feel like sharing my opinion on a film that's going to be brand new. I mean, if I have something to say about it, it would be extensive, and I'd rather just not go there. Anyway, the DLC suits do not inspire me. I feel like there's always going to be one suit that people will find obscure and uninteresting, which would be Cyborg Spider-Man. And uh, Sp Cyborg Spider-Man has an alternate universe counterpart, so, you know, that's kind of established. Same with Aaron Eichmann suit, and the same with the Spider-Verse suit, because it is basically low-key Sam Raimi style of a costume. Now, <sighs> this is where it gets difficult, because you're talking about being a developer. I mean, having a developer take your money... And you pay for these items. I feel like the fans, in this case, might actually be entitled to a little more just because it's their money. Although, arguably, the problem is you can't please everybody in the Spider-Man community because everyone is so different and has vast opinions. And my personal take, I don't feel like the spider armor and the iron spider armor directly from the comics should be something that you charge people for considering it's been in so many other games. And I know it's not just, it's not costumes that people are being charged for solely, it's the DLC. Which is kind of something I want to get into. The downloadable content from the city, I was expecting better. It started off really well with Black Cat and the pregnancy scare for Spider-Man because of their past relationship. But after that, I'm just not really interested. Like, I don't care. I don't care about Hammerhead. Yuri... Yuri had a great subplot, or plot, of the second DLC. The problem with trying to tell this story is that you don't have a central character other than Spider-Man in terms of gameplay, but the stories seem to be tethered to certain characters. Black Cat gets her own episode, Yuri gets her own episode, and Spider-Man just happens to be there because we have to play the game as the player. And I guess Sable is coming back for the Silver Lining DLC? In terms of content for each one, I expected a whole map filled with downloadable side missions, but that's not really there. It's like half the map or three quarters of the map. I kind of expected as many side missions, expected as many side missions as you could possibly cram into, each with their own diverse talent, each with a different use of Spider-Man's gadgets, and they're just not that fun. I'm sorry. I mean, yeah, Screwball is a little bit fun, but I don't know. The DLC just feels so minor. I'm just not interested in it. W when it comes to Turf Wars, for example, I was hoping to see Spider-Man's bosses, Spider-Man's enemies, like, as boss battles, clashing with each other and against him. Or maybe a four-way fight. I was expecting Tombstone. I was expecting Mr. Negative, maybe a little bit. Silvermane, of all people. I mean, he's a crime boss. Uh, Tombstone, in some depictions, is a crime boss. I I didn't get that. I kind of expected like this four-way firefight between Spider-Man and maybe three or four of his enemies, his rogues galleries, who tr like to control crime. Maybe something with Fisk. Maybe a follow-up on that. That. And I just feel like the hype isn't there. I was hoping the DLC would actually feel like another game. That's what I think a lot of people wanted and why 
the I could say the Black Hat story went was like a B plus or an A minus, and then we get the Yuri story with Turf Wars Hammerhead, and that's kind of like a C plus to a D minus. And Silver Lining is supposed to be the culmination of past downloadable stories. It just doesn't feel like a brand new game. I think that's the problem and why a lot of people feel like they Insomniac has underdelivered. So that's kind of what I think about that. The the whole expansion set to Spider-Man, Marvel Spider-Man for PS4, it's just there. That's all it is to me. I mean, yeah, there's some story tidbits. It's kind of nice, but it just feels like some. It doesn't feel like its own type of game. There's no separate... Yeah, there's no entry. It just feels like a slight, a slight addition to the main game, even though it's not the main game itself, even though it makes no references to the main game, you know? Something like that. People like Caboose XBL who made that video trying to tone down the negativity regarding the missing Sam Raimi costume and other complaints, him as a YouTube user, I don't really have any ill will against him, but it's people like that that make me feel glad that I'm not a major YouTuber with 100,000 followers and someone who's probably getting a review copy of the game and having his judgment possibly clouded by by the fact that he gets the game early like i don't really want to be someone with that much of a following and yet the pressure's on me to deliver a positive review because there are some things that i just wish people would talk about with this game that is not good that are not good a lot of factors and i just i'm not happy with the way spider-man ps4 is the great game and by fans as not that great of a game I mean, Spider-Man PS4, it has a lot going for it. Story-wise, gameplay-wise, there's some pros, there's also some cons. A more honest review, that's what I want. Someone who knows that the game is lacking in some areas and could be tweaked. Because I think ultimately the problem with constructive criticism is that it's not as present as it used to be. It just seems like YouTubers, and I don't want to make this about Caboose XBL or Evan Falarka, but several YouTubers out there, I just feel like they play more as yes-men rather than people with honest intentions. I feel like they just don't really tell the truth about certain games. I mean, they do. They do. They they tell their perception of the game, but so I don't know. It's just complicated to say because I do think, you know, the game does deserve positive PR if it's really that good on one hand. On the other hand, I don't think negativity has to be looked at as negativity. I think constructive feedback on what does work and what doesn't work really ought to be a highlight, and it should want to make Insomniac improve on the next title. You know, not, constructive criticism, it kind of hurts if you're a child who doesn't understand or hasn't been exposed to it that much, but if you're an adult, I feel like constructive criticism deserves to be acknowledged, and it really doesn't seem to be. I mean... <laughs> I don't know. Caboose, Caboose's video just made me feel like he seemed like a yes man for the game. Evan's videos usually make me feel like he is kind of a yes man, but I guess I, I don't know what ties he has to Insomniac. Maybe I can find out on his, um, based on what his following says or likes to talk about. I don't hate them, and I don't think they're yes men per se. I just feel like they give off that impression. But, you know, if you work somewhere, yeah, you got yeah, you got to toe the company line, but at the same time, you know, pick up on your strengths. Don't dwell on them. Learn from them. That's what I think Insomniac should do in terms of their communication and in terms of their gameplay development. On the plus side, no MJ missions for the DLC, the second one involving Yuri and Hammerhead when it comes to Turf Wars. So I'm hoping that there will be no MJ missions present when it comes to the third DLC, Silver Lining. Also... Why is Sable able to kick Spider-Man's ass? And this was in the main game. Why is she able to kick his ass? Uh, he's got ra radioactive spider powers. What does she have? Uh, two guns. That's it. I don't know. Okay. I think that's it for now because I have nothing else I want to say. I just kind of found myself a little perplexed by the situation. And I feel like there is a middle ground when it comes to this fandom. When it comes to Spider-Man PS4 getting some great areas some areas right um and some negative highlights that's what i think a constructive criticism and it doesn't always have to be this is great or this is terrible i think there's room for in between thinking not a problem with there's no problem with that
one more thing before I go. In the past, I've thought about being a reviewer, but I really don't want to do it if I can't keep the honesty there. I mean, I have a bias with Devil May Cry 3 and 4, but they're not perfect games. They're far from, but they're very good games. Um, that's my strength. But there, uh, but I can say that about anyone or anyone who loves a game. Like, like I said, I don't hate anyone and I don't make videos to bash them. I'm not interested in doing that. I just want to pass down a couple words of wisdom. That's it. Oh, and one more disclaimer. I don't have a side when it comes to Lucas, Evan Falarka, and Caboose XBL. I just think that some of their viewpoints, you know, I like some of what they say. I agree with some. I disagree with other points. But, you know, there's room for a dialogue. There's room for a conversation because we don't have that anymore. We just have confrontations, and I think it hurts the community in a way. But, you know, and if you guys have any questions, feel free to ask me. I'll just type it in text, you know? I haven't made a video in a while. I've kind of, kind of been up and down when it comes to YouTube. I kind of just don't feel like doing it. But at the same time, if I've got something to say, I've got something to say. I think it helps.